So hi, welcome back. And this is gonna be my 10th episode of Ether Physics. My 10th. Well, this is gonna get out of hand, man, because I got 10 fingers and I seem to have showed you guys my fingers in most of my episodes. But I'm getting out of fingers. So today is gonna be my 10th episode and we're gonna talk about rotating for the seats. In the last episode, we wrote down the equation du divided by dt equals 1 divided by the density dp plus, am I right? Oh no, it was minus. Minus the delta function central point of gravity. This equation is about the situation that you have a portion of a fluid and it's not rotating. We discussed in other in our other video that whenever a fluid starts to rotate, it starts to get vorticity. Eventually, when you rotate a fluid, it starts to look as if it is a solid piece of fluid because of the particles that are inside the vortex will stay inside of the vortex, and the particles that are outside of the vortex can move around the vortex or can be changed over time, but. In the vortex, in the core of the vortex, it, it's the, the holonomic part of the vortex, all particles stay inside the vortex. So we discussed this before that um, whenever we call something a vortex tube, that means the vortex is filled with vortex lines. Vortex lines are small particles stacked on top of each other that stay on top of each other and they all have the same vorticity. They, they rotate around their axis in lines. So you can, you can think of this tube filled with water or ether and they are all stacked on top of each other. All these small, all these small particles are in lines on top of each other. That's the reason why we are able to blow smoke rings uh, with a vortex gun or some smokers can do that with their mouth. I showed you in another video a small idea of a vortex gun. But what actually happens is that we have smoke particles inside the air and those smoke particles are stacked on top of each other and they're rolling around the center of gravity. Because of the rotation, so we're gonna give it a clockwise, a counterclockwise rotation. The rotating motions, the rotating motion will give a kinetic energy for all the particles in a centripetal way. So all particles will want to go to the outside, but because of the edge, they can't go any further. So eventually the vortex will look as if it is filled with small circle planes of particles. So all movement within the vortex will be with vortex lines. So if we would call this, of course, the x direction, and we would call this part the y direction, and we would call the height of this drawing the z direction, all movements of particles will be in the x and y direction. So they can't go in the z direction because they're all stacked on top of each other. What that means is if you would press down on a particle on top of the vortex, you would press the particle on the, on the bottom of the vortex, on the bottom of the vortex line, you would press it in one direction, in the x or y direction. So particles can only move in the x and y coordinates and not in the z coordinates. That's very important. So whenever we have a rotating fluid, we get two extra forces. And one of the forces, because of the rotation, uh, is the kinetic energy of particles wanted to go outside. So we have to add that to our equation. So we call this part non-rotation. And whenever we have a rotation, we add something to this equation. So what do we add? We add in this equation the delta function omega the radius, omega squared radius squared divided by 2. This, this represents the kinetic energy of the rotation. So the r here represents the radius of the vortex. 
which is not the diameter radius. So this part would be the r. And the omega is it is about the amount of circulations the vortex makes in a second or yeah, it's about the angular frequency. On top of that, we get ourselves some Coriolis forces, which will be 2 omega vector over u vector. Whereas this u and that u are related, that omega is related to that omega, because the omega is about the vorticity, and the vorticity is eventually rotation around its center. As you can see, an extra part to the original equation that we introduced in episode 9. We can grab these two parts of the equation, we can rewrite it, and then it's dependent on the relative position. We can rewrite this part, we can mix it together to make it a minus delta function over central point of gravity plus omega squared radius squared divided by 2. You can see that whenever we're talking about whenever talking about relative positions, we can multiply these two together to make it an easier equation. So we get ourselves four different forces. We would call this part relative acceleration. This would be our pressure. This would be central point of gravity. And here we have the centripetal acceleration. The last one would be our Coriolis acceleration. What happens to the original idea we have of a vortex gun shooting a small vortex ring through our vortex tube, as I draw here, drew here. If we would take the same situation, and this would be our non-rotating situation, and now we're going to draw our rotating situation. So that arrow indicates that it is rotating in that direction, of course. If it is rotating in that direction, and we would shoot the vortex, it would have a new trajectory. It would curve up. And if we would rotate it in a clockwise direction, the other direction, it would, of course, bend down, down in the other direction. The faster the vortex rotates, the curvier the trajectory of the vortex the vortex ring would get. So faster it rotates, the more it curves. Back to this rotating situation. We remove the vortex gun. It's still rotating. These vortex lines, I am, uh, I am removing them, but in reality, they're still in this situation. But now we say we have a small vortex in the center. Small vortex, wow, that's a nice vortex. And around that vortex is a spherical equilibrium of pressure. It looks as if we have a spherical substance that has the same density, that is the same substance, in the middle of this vortex. And whenever we are going to move it in a certain direction, for instance, we say it's going up, we know already that there are vortex lines. There are vortex lines. There are vortex lines going from the top to the bottom, we can imagine ourselves having another tube in the center of the vortex tube that has the circumference the same as the sphere is. So the radius of this vortex tube is the same as the radius of the sphere in the center. If we move the small spherical part of the fluid upwards, while we have a rotation in the total fluid in a counterclockwise rotation, it will give us a relative vorticity for this new vortex, for this new part that's filled with vortex lines. I'm going to draw these lines. What happens is that all these vortex lines inside the new vortex tube that is around the spherical part of the fluid will have a negative vorticity. So what actually is going to happen is that this part of the fluid will rotate not in a counterclockwise rotation, but it will go in a clockwise rotation. And that's very counterintuitive, but it is true. It does happen. And it is of the fact that we have vortex lines. And while it moves very slowly compared to the rotation, it needs to have a low Rossby number. 
If it moves very slow to the rotational speed, for instance, 100 of the velocity, 100 of the velocity that it rotated, and then you have that velocity upwards, you would see this effect. If you go faster, you would destroy the vortex lines because of the fact that there's a lot of pressure in the movement. But if you move it slow enough, you would get all this water would stream in that direction. So in a counterclockwise direction for the entire vortex tube and the small vortex tube that has the same radius. So you say this small r would be the same as inside this part, small r. It will go in a clockwise rotation. And that's very weird, but still true and interesting. So eventually, that's what these formulas tell us. And I hope that that was informative for you. I hope you, you like my explanation of the vortex. Um, it's not really my explanation, it's physics explanation, and it's the way that they taught me about the vortex. And I just wanted to share you, share this with you. Yeah, again, thanks a lot for watching, and see you next time.